I tell you, I just love CAD CAM dentistry. <laughs> it's just incredible. I'm up here at my digital studio where I'm having the dream of my life, but it didn't start here. It started over 20 years ago in my office and I still have an office. And that started out with RedCam, Sarek RedCam. Can you believe that? I tell you, that was a great journey and it's continued to be a great journey. Now in today's world, I still feel that Sarek Chairside is the master of same day restorations and I use it on a daily basis and I love it. And I'm gonna go over my recommendations on the latest systems to have in office. I get a lot of questions on this, like I have an MCXL, should I get Prime Mill? It's a good question, it's quite expensive. Then I have Omnicam, should I upgrade to Prime Scan? Uh, I get these questions often on my website and social media, and even on my teaching site, cleminstitute.com, where I have a full curriculum on how to integrate CEREC into your practice and all the techniques, virtual design, workflow, finishing workflow, which is what I love. That's what I'm up here doing at my home studio. This is where I film most of my technique videos on how to finish restorations with the latest materials, lab burrs, stain and glaze, you name it, it's a lot of fun. When I think of CEREC in my office, I had Red Cam, Blue Cam, Omnicam, Prime Scan. There's a lot of upgrades there. There's a lot of costs and expense. I've gone through compact units. I had two of them. I've been through two MCXLs and now I have the Prime Mill. So there's a lot of expense that goes into that equipment. Has it been worth it? Bar none. Best thing I've ever done in my practice the last 20 years, which is half of my career. I have loved Sarek Chairside. It's really improved through the years with the machining. Think of the products where we had the Vita blocks and we had Impress, which used to be called ProCAD. Emacs was a game changer. Can you imagine? We're almost 20 years into Emacs, which has the best track record of any ceramic in the history of a ceramic material in a clinical theater. And then we were introduced to Zirconia and I had that first MCXL dry mill and all we had was 3Y and that was a little tough to make those things look good, but they're strong. And then look at the plethora of materials and brands that we have within Zirconia now. And Zirconia has been a major core of my practice with my elderly clients that have subgingival decay. And we're just trying to give them a quality of life so they can chew and enjoy their life. So we have everything we need within our CEREC system. And now we have printing, uh, printing appliances, some are printing restorations. You have different printing options within our clinical theater. If you go with the prime print, you get the in-lab, so you can get that right off to your prime print. I chose not to go that direction because I have other printers that I prefer. I have the Yasiga, which is still one of the best printing options in the market, particularly for precision. I also have Sprint Ray, their latest system and it's incredible. I print all my appliances, but I gravitated toward ExoCAD rather than InLab for this one reason, and that's because I can do digital wax ups. Facial driven. I think now in our clinical theater, when we're applying digital dentistry, we want more than one system. So we have a lot of different systems we use. That's where I see us in dentistry today, and that is I think CEREC is still the best chair side system out there today, particularly posteriorly with the biogeneric software. The one criteria to get great proposals is adequate occlusal reduction for the material you're gonna engineer. Because built into the software, you have your metrics systems. In other words, it will show you if you're too thin. And that's a really nice thing to have. So that way we're securing what we design in our clinical theater and it's gonna work for us with predictability. Now, as far as the materials that I use, Emacs is still my number one ceramic. I like it because I can go thin with it. It's been proven just about 20 years now. And there's ways to manage color systems on that. I'll refer that video below on how to choose the right Emacs color or value to make sure it doesn't go low in value. That's 
been another question that I get is that Emacs can go low in value. As with all ceramics, once they're cemented, there's a tendency once hydration happens and the bonding resin matures, a lot of materials will come down in value a little bit. The thinner you are, the more it's gonna show up. Emacs, if you fire it multiple times, it will have a tendency to come down in value, meaning it becomes more translucent. So we have to be aware of that. But that's for another video, because this is about what's the best system to use today. So is it worthwhile upgrading to Prime Scan and Prime Mill? Now, in my hands it is because the secret sauce for Prime Mill is extra fine mill for the ceramics. I mill all my Emacs restorations out and I still like Impress. So I do impress quite a bit, but I always mill them in extra fine mill. That's a four burr set. And the reason why is the margins are impeccable. I recently had a rep from a company that came into my office that was trying to push their lithium disilicate. And they said, well, the reason why is Emacs chips and this material won't chip. Well, it depends on how you mill it out. So I don't use fast mill for Emacs, never have, well, I've tried it, but I'm not happy with the margin integrity. I like the extra fine mill and with the prime mill, it's fairly fast. It's just a little longer than the fine mill. Now, the one downside of the prime mill is the first burr pass on the left side is 1.4. So there's a tendency to get some over mill issues based on how you prep. You don't see a lot of that. Where you run into a problem with over mill is on anterior really thin veneers. If you wrap around into the elbow or you wrap through the interproximal contact, you're gonna get a little over mill on the integral side from the line angles. And that's where you have to be careful about going really thin. Now, that's one reason why I have the PM7 from Ivoclair, that's a five axis. And with that, I can mill really thin without any over mill. And it's not the best same day milling unit. Now it is up at my digital lab, which I love. This is my dream. And I, I said that early in the video is my dream to get here started with red cam 20 years ago. I've been practicing for over 40 years now and I'm not done because I enjoy what I do. And the main reason why I enjoy what I do is because the systems that I have bring out that passion of creativity and artistry and function I have full control. I'm about self-reliance. In other words, the more I can rely on the skill sets within the office, whether it's your team or you, the more stable you're gonna be as a practice. So let's get back to, is it worth the upgrade? Now you have to look at how many restorations are you doing a month? Are you sending them out to a lab? Now in my practice and with what I've done, I have sent out a restorative case outside of a six unit bridge that I needed to have milled out of a puck several years ago before I had the PM7. I did send that out, they sent it back and I finished it in my office. So I'm about self-reliance because I enjoy the ceramic side of it. The classes that I offer help offices to build to that level even on their anterior work. And today's software, particularly with AI, and you do have other options such as ExoCAD. ExoCAD is my software of choice for anterior work because the proposals, the AI component of that is incredible. I still think that Ceric Chair Side is really good for posterior restorations. The biogeneric AI component of that is fast. I can design it, get it into the mouth in the same day. Even though I do anterior cases like this, this is a anterior veneer case that took me about seven hours. It's BL4, HT, finished with meal, placed in. Those veneers are really thin between three to 400 microns. You can get that done. So when you look at the cost, it's just not what you're gonna see on the spreadsheet, even though that's really important because we have to use critical thinking and making sure that the financial picture works in our office. But for me, CAD CAM dentistry changes the whole flow of your office. It changes the perception and how people see you. I can tell you, people love the fact that I control everything. In fact, I've used a journey of mastering anterior aesthetics and comprehensive care in my practice to give me that niche in what I do in my community, and it's been incredible. Ceric also impacts the flow in your office and patients love it when you can deliver restorations in the same appointment. 
So that can build momentum. Momentum is everything in the way we practice because it's how we're perceived, it's how we build our brand. And in my hands, even though I practice two and a half days a week, I easily can afford the Prime Scan and the Prime Mill. And I still have an M6 Excel. Now, as far as printing goes, you wanna look at all your options. I like where Sprint Ray is going. That company is so focused on being the best in the field and the services they offer. I look at printing for many models and also my appliances. I use ExoCAD to design my appliances. It's really easy to do. We print a lot of appliances in our office. I am using my prime scan to scan the mouth. I'll transfer that file into DS Core as a DXD file. And then within the DS Core, they have a conversion factor for ExoCAD. So you have your full color portfolio when you're designing and that works out really well. So thank you, Dan Splice That was a gift to us in the field to use the Prime Scan with other systems. There's another factor here in being successful in dental practice with self-reliance. I'm really into that. And that is to develop your skill sets to optimize and maximize what you can do with CEREC. Now, the beauty of that is that it's gonna pay for itself that much more and the other thing you may want to consider is, do you want to keep writing off because you're contracted to insurance companies? Now, I made a choice 20 years ago to remove myself from those strains. And that is I have full relationship with my patients. We still process insurance for them, but I'm not contracted, nor do they set my fees. And yes, can that work? Absolutely. In fact, I'm associated with a company that is driven to help people develop their independence in dentistry and self-reliance. And if you want to know more about that, post a question below. Because I can tell you, the majority of you folks, if you really have the proper coaching and you want to go this route, you can go fee for service. So you're not writing off so much of what you do, meaning that you don't have to work so hard. You can control your overhead better and it can be done with the proper coaching and with the decision that you would want to make on that. In fact, the latest I heard on that is that one in six offices in the U.S. want to go fee for service. So if you want to go that route, post that below and I'll share another video on how to do that. So can CEREC be proficient for you and save you money and pay for itself in your practice? Absolutely. When I look back over my career of 40 years plus, half of that's been with CEREC. And I can tell you, I really dedicated myself to the process with this feeling of self-reliance and it has paid for itself multiple times and lowered my overhead 10%. So it is a winner no matter how you look at it, even though the initial cost of it is high, even the upgrades are high. Look at the overall picture. It will change the way you are as a clinician and the way you grow. Get educated, keep educating yourself. Even as an educator, I still take a lot of classes every year so I can keep growing and just feel that passion bucket that you have. You gotta live in passion in what you do because that's, that's what makes life worth living, particularly within the practice. So you can go home, be a good steward for your family and enjoy your life the best you can and learn from your hiccups. Everyone has hiccups, including me. Is it worth upgrading to the latest system? The Prime Mill is working really well right now. It had a few hiccups to start with and uh, I waited about two years before I got into the Prime Mill because it wasn't quite there. Now I still use my M6L. The one value of the M6L is on the left side, you have the 12 fur for the integral surface. When you use 12 fur, it's 0.85. On the Prime Mill is 1.4. So there's a better integral mill with that. And also your fine mill will be better than the fine mill on the Prime Mill. However, I use the Prime Mill for extra fine mill and also for zirconia mill. And if you clean the chamber well between switching between zirconia and any type of ceramic, so you have to pay attention to that. It would be nice to have a dedicated milling unit for each one. And I know a lot of labs do that, but they've designed the prime mill to do both. Now, as far as furnaces go, if you're doing ceramics, you need more than the speed fire. And that's by Densply Serona. The speed fire is really great for a katana. And I'll get to which materials I use in just a moment because Katana is a great zirconia. Even though I use other ones, I do use it in certain circumstances. I have found in my hands, in my digital studio, 
The furnace I use the most when I'm in the office is the CS6, and the reason why is it has a very fast Emacs cycle in the way it's designed, and it's also designed for zirconia, particularly if you're using the Aviclar zirconias like the Prime and the Zircat MP Multi, they have their LT as well, but I don't use the LT much anymore because the Prime is so strong. So they've designed this furnace to be very efficient and also you can program in other brands. The problem with the Speedfire is that it's great for Katana, but it's not really great for ceramics. Let's say I want to use Mio. It's not really effective for Mio. You need a vacuum. The Speedfire doesn't have that. So I think in today's world, if you're doing Emacs, you need to have at least a CS6, because there's an 11 minute cycle there at this time of the video. And also I have a CS2 and a CS in my training center, so I have the ability to use a lot of different furnaces. But if you really want to master Emacs or any type of ceramic, you're better off not using the Speedfire. Now up here at my digital studio at my homestead, I have the PM7, I have the 510, program mat and also the S2. That's for zirconia from a disc. And then this is a really nice ceramic furnace. But up here, it's more directed toward cases I'm not doing in the same day where I can master a better mill with a five axis. And you'll see the definition on here. There's no over mill internally. You'll see those margins are impeccable. Take a look at the anatomy. That's why I like this system because it's there to master that refinement that I'm looking for. And then I drive that from ExoCAD from the prime scan. So the question is what's best for your office? You have to determine where you want to go. For instance, I think printing is going to take a larger role in our future. I would say in my hands, I chose not to go with the prime print. Not that it's a bad system, but it's a closed system. I like more open systems and printers are kind of like iPhones. <laughs> they upgrade a lot. Printing is moving so quickly right now where it can get away from you quickly. So you have to be aware of that. So I think now's the time to have open systems. And thank you, DS Core, you did that for us. And would I still use Ceric Chairside? And would I get it today? Absolutely, I would get the Prime Scan. The beauty of the Prime Scan is that it's a complete scan, particularly for appliances and taking bilateral buckle scans for the occlusion. It's spot on, particularly for large cases. If you're wanting to scan those, send those to the lab. And then I would encourage you to learn how to do that yourself. I have classes in that, but it's definitely worth the upgrade now over the Omnicam. When you wanna look at everything that we can now do with digital imaging, PrimeScan is really a good system. And there will be other camera systems that come out. You have your trios, and I'm sure that DS is gonna come out with another camera in due time. How do you wanna stay integrated within your package, your digital package? I think it comes back to this sense of self-reliance, and that is the more you can do and control in your practice, the more you control your destiny, the more you control your brand, the more you can control your skill sets. So we build that skill set in leadership, build it in communication, build it in your clinical skills, and that brand will transform with you. And if you want coaching in that journey, go ahead and put that below in the comments because I have had coaching and I coach a lot of people now and I also have good associations that can coach you through wherever you wanna go in your practice. <laughs> this video got a little long, but I thought it was a good topic because I get a lot of questions on what should I put in my clinical theater and that could change in the future. That's where I am now. But if you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below. <laughs> it's been fun talking with you today. See you in the next video. Bye now.